Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our uh, next uh, OK English breakfast. Uh, and uh, today we are going to have a mini lesson. Uh, it is a conversation lesson. It will be all in English. But I will wait for you. So how was your weekend, everyone? Oh, hello, Agnieszka. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Good morning. So how was your weekend, everyone? Is everyone okay? Had a good time? Everything okay? Let me know. Uh, my weekend was um, quite good, very hot. It is really hot in Portugal, very hot. So on Saturday and Sunday we had uh, almost 35 degrees. And uh, I went to the beach on Saturday and I put sunscreen uh, not in a very good and proper way. So uh, I have a lot of red patches. I have red here, red here, red on my belly and and uh, in some other places and it's really uncomfortable, very, <laughs> it's really, really bad. Uh, but other than that, it was good. It was good. Very relaxing, lazy weekend. How was yours? How was yours? Uh, hello, Mariola. Welcome. Uh, welcome. So today I am drinking water with ice because it's really hot and I need some uh, kind of to cool down a little. But we are going to start soon. All right. Before we start in English, we are going to have the whole mini lesson today will be in English. But before we start, a few things in Polish. Okay. Więc zanim zaczniemy naszą mini lekcję, która będzie cała po angielsku dzisiaj, więc będziecie mieli takie ćwiczenie na słuchanie trochę. Ja będę tłumaczyć również, to znaczy na ekranie będą pojawiać się tłumaczenia po polsku również. Więc jeżeli Wasz angielski jest troszeczkę na gorszym poziomie i będziecie mieli jakieś tam problemy ze zrozumieniem, to będziecie też mieli niektóre rzeczy w języku polskim, które prawdopodobnie ułatwią Wam zrozumienie. Mam nadzieję, że Wam e, ułatwią zrozumienie tego wszystkiego. E, więc e, zaraz, będziemy, zaraz przejdziemy do angielskiej wersji naszej lekcji. Parę rzeczy, o, o których chciałam jeszcze powiedzieć po polsku, żeby wszyscy zrozumieli. Na naszej grupie Angielska Konwersacja mamy ponad 700 osób e, obecnie. I zrobiłam ostatnio postanowienie, że jak będziemy mieli 1000 osób, to będziemy robić sobie regularne quizy. Nie będą to, mini, nie będą to takie mini lekcje, nie będą to e, takie spotkania, jak mamy tutaj na śniadaniu. Będą to po prostu quizy przez może 30 minut. E, będziecie takie, <śmiech> będą się pojawiać na ekranie zadania i to będzie wszystko na żywo. Ja będę to wszystko poprawiać e, jak e, e, w międzyczasie, więc, więc będziemy mogli sobie takie, tak, dosyć takie interaktywne zadania robić, ale musi być tysiąc osób. E, jak do tysiąc osób dojdziemy, to sobie będziemy robić takie, takie spotkania. E, moi uczniowie, jeżeli tutaj jesteście byli i obecni, uczniowie będą mieli z kolei szansę na, e, na to, aby mieć takie mini konsultacje. Zawsze mówię mini, bo to są zawsze mini rzeczy. E, więc przez 15 minut, dwa razy w tygodniu będę dla Was dostępna ogólnie na grupie na Facebooku, ale jeżeli nie macie Facebooka lub jest to dla Was na przykład, no nie możecie się zalogować, to będę wysyłać Wam link na e-mail i przez ten link będziecie mogli się dostać do tak zwanego pokoju. Pokój to jest taki czat, jak na przykład na Skype'ie, gdzie możemy się na żywo widzieć, możemy się ze sobą rozmawiać. I e, takie spotkanie jest po, dla Was po to, aby sobie porozmawiać po angielsku. Możemy sobie rozmawiać po angielsku, ale możemy sobie też e, na przykład możecie zadawać pytania. Jak macie jakieś pytania o język angielski, e, to możecie również e, przyjść i zadać mi pytanie. E, I mam nadzieję, że z tego skorzystacie. To będzie dwa razy w tygodniu, o różnych porach, w różnych dniach, bo e, to będzie tylko wtedy, kiedy będę znajdować na to czas. Natomiast 24 godziny wcześniej, dzień wcześniej będziecie dostawać na maila powiadomienie, że jutro będzie taka konsultacja, będziecie mogli się 
się przy, dołączyć. Mam nadzieję, że to, że to będzie coś fajnego dla Was. No i oczywiście raz w miesiącu macie nasze zadania, które Wam wysyłam, dodatkowe zadania, które dostajecie i do tego jest możliwość, żeby się nagrać na program, to się nazywa Flip Grid chyba o ile pamiętam, i tam można się nagrać minuta 30 sekund wypowiedzi na zadany temat, więc mam nadzieję, że to jest kolejna rzecz, którą, z której skorzystacie. To jest dla moich uczniów, którzy, którzy chcą sobie poćwiczyć język angielski, więc tam z kartą zadań, którą dostajecie raz w miesiącu, otrzymujecie również link do tego, do tego programu i tam możecie odsłuchać w mojej wypowiedzi mojego pytania i odpowiedzieć na to pytanie po angielsku. I ja oczywiście zawsze poprawiam i zawsze są, to znaczy przynajmniej staram się, żeby to było dla dwóch grup i dla początkujących osób i dla zaawansowanych, więc też to jest za Was ekstra zadanie i to jest dla uczniów, którzy byli uczniami wcześniej i są obecnie uczniami OK English, więc dla, dla tej grupy osób. Okay, uh, Agnieszka went to Gdańsk. The weather was beautiful. Oh, I love Gdańsk. It's my one of my favorite cities uh, in Poland. I studied there in Gdańsk. Uh, it, it was great. Uh, uh, Mariola, I drink hot water with lemon and mint. And I hope you're not sick, Mariola. Are you drinking because you're sick, because you're cold, or it's just because you it's for, for your health and you do it every day. It's very healthy in the morning, for sure, before breakfast. Um, uh, and Małgorzata, a lesson in English. So she's, uh, she's very happy. Okay, I'm very happy too. I, this is an experiment, okay? So I, I hope that you will like it. Okay, so as I said, the whole the whole lesson will be in English. Okay, so you will be you will have a chance to listen to an English to English language, and uh, then we will it it will have a structure. So first, we I will give you some vocabulary. Okay, so it's it's good to have something to write it down because after that you will hear a long text where I use this vocabulary uh, in sentences and it's good to have a look and see and check wh what it all means if you forget, okay? So first I will give you vocabulary, then you will listen to a longer text about political correctness and we'll come back to this what it means, okay? So you will uh, listen, I will, uh, I will, I think I will read it twice So I will read it um, in a normal pace, so maybe not very fast, but you know, in a normal way. And then I will read it again very slowly. And then you will have three questions, three questions to answer, okay? Uh, after I read it um, uh, the last time, you, you will hear three questions that also will be on the screen. After that, I invite you to go to uh, my blog, to OK English blog, because you will have the whole text there, questions, vocabulary, and one question that is a little bit longer. So you can either write a longer answer or you can use it to practice your speaking. You can speak to yourself or you can uh, maybe use it with your teacher or something like that, okay? So first, we will have a look at some vocabulary, at some vocabulary. So first is political correctness, political correctness. So political correctness is when we, uh, when we speak uh, in a way not to offend someone. We don't want to offend certain groups of people not we we don't it's not only it's not about everyone right it's about certain groups of people so it can be people of different co uh, skin color or people who uh, have different uh, sexual orientation or maybe um, even uh, different gender so we don't want to offend like for example uh, we use language uh, so we don't offend women let's say Right? Uh, so, and to be politically correct, it means that it is an adjective. So, if I am politically correct, 
and I pay attention to political correctness. Okay, so someone, when they pay attention to what uh, they say and how they say it, they they are then they are politically correct. Okay, next one, next one is policy. Policy it can mean quite a few things. Okay, so uh, policy it can be, for example. Um, a document uh, that a law or maybe law that is passed by the government but it also can mean that um, it is something that the government does to um, uh, to it's the, the general their general poly uh, um, line of politics is their policy Okay, so if they are, for example, uh, right wing or left wing, they will have their own policies. They will try to pass these policies, and this is uh, very often also in companies, in companies, in uh, in business. Big companies have also their policies. They also have the set of rules that you have to follow. Um, and for example, it can be how many days off you can have, but also there is uh, in the um, uh, in some of the companies you also have uh, discrimination policy, anti-discrimination policies, right? So um, you, for example, they tell you uh, how what language you can use and how you can behave to not to offend other people. Uh, Camille policy uh, of the company, for instance, exactly, Camille, uh, exactly. So if the, the, a company can also have their own policies, exactly, right? So the set of rules uh, in a company. Next one is sexual orientation. So sexual orientation, um, I think it's very, sim very easy to understand because it's very close to our uh, the Polish uh, phrase. So sexual orientation is uh, when uh, people uh, fancy um, either the same gender or a, uh, opposite gender, right? So we have um, uh, we have homosexuals, we have heterosexuals, and so straight, gay, and so on. So sexual orientation is another one. Disability, disability, disability is when uh, someone, for example. Uh, is on a wheelchair, cannot walk, so they have a disability. Um, also, when people are deaf, uh, deaf, przepraszam, uh, deaf, and uh, or blind, uh, they also have a disability. Okay, so we say people with disability um, in this case. Next one is racist. Racist can mean uh, two things. They so racist can mean a, per, a person can be racist, okay? So we can say he's uh, it, this is a very racist, also, it's an adjective, okay? He's, uh, uh, he's racist, or um, this is racist. The same is with sexist, sexist, okay? So with sexist, is a person who, for example, can discriminate against um, uh, other genders uh, or makes comments that are not very, you know, um, tolerant maybe in a way uh, towards the, uh, the other gender. Also, this is a, an adjective here as well. And next one is diversity. Diversity. Diversity is... Um, is a quite a very popular word nowadays okay so a lot of people talk about diversity if we have diversity in a company for example this means that the company employs people from different countries um, of uh, different uh, genders and different race um, also we can say that it's uh, it regards the religion as well. So um, diversity can be in a company. It is very often at the moment, for example, in the UK, it is a very big uh, subject uh, about diversity in companies, in workplaces, but also in uh, the country, it can be the same diversity. Next one is diverse society. 
diverse society. So society, we live in society. Uh, we have um, uh, our uh, families in in a school. At school, you we we learn what society is. So we have. Uh, our, all the people that create one country is a society it can be also in your uh, hometown it can be in a city and so on and so on so diverse means that there are people from different backgrounds so they have they can come uh, from different countries they can have different skin colors they can have they can be of different genders and so on and so on so if we have diverse society it means that there are different people from different backgrounds and i used a word that me that is background background so this can mean quite a bit of uh, quite quite a lot of things but uh, here for example when we say that people are from different backgrounds we can mean that they come from different countries they can but they also can have different past so for example we all have backgrounds my background for example is that i am from poland and i grew up in poland and um, I come from middle class family. Uh, my parents are uh, um, entrepreneurs. Uh, they have their own companies. This all can be my background. Also in business, if you ever um, uh, fill up um, maybe an application form not, but it does happen that someone asks you about your background on an interview, at the interview. And if they do, they probably mean, what is your education? That's also, that also happens, yeah? So what is your background? Sometimes it is about your education or something that you did in the past, right? So I'm a teacher, but my background is completely different because for many years I worked as an administrator in different companies. So it can also um, mean that my background is administration or something like that, right? So very often it can mean, it depends on the context here. Because we are talking about political correctness and we're talking about diversity and we're talking about uh, tolerance today i think it's uh, good to uh, remember that background here it means that uh, we, we are talking about uh, someone coming from a different country uh, or someone is f uh, of a different religion or have some um, maybe uh, from a different culture in general okay so next one complex complex so something that is complicated, basically. It is a complex issue. It is a complex problem. It means that it has many layers. It means that it is very complicated. Also an adjective here, and um, I think it's straightforward. There is um, nothing uh, difficult about this. Of course, if you have any questions, please, or, or, or you want to find out more or something like that, please ask. It doesn't have to be in English. You can ask in Polish as well. Uh, and next one, ethnic group, ethnic group. So ethnic group, it is um, ethnic group is a group of people that uh, have um, some kind of different culture uh, than the other. So ethnic group could be um, that people have uh, different. They come from a, a different place. For example, they have um, uh, different music. They have different food. Uh, they can dress in a different way also um, as well so ethnic group is not a nationality right it is not a nationality it can they can be polish but they can have their own different culture and they can um, have they can be a little bit different from from the other uh, parts of the society all right my dear all i hope that uh, this is clear if you want to me to repeat something please let me know okay i will wait for a few seconds is this clear is this clear if it's clear if everything is clear please uh, send me a heart or a thumbs up 
uh, and so we will move to the next uh, to the next part of this lesson where we're going to have a short text okay everything clear you understand everything I hope you do okay I can see that all right good good so the great I am I'm happy to to see that uh, you understand okay so I'm going to read a short text, otherwise I would speak, but I think it's just quicker if I just read it. Okay, so I will read it twice for you, and then you will have three questions. Okay, um, well, maybe I'll change it a, a, a little bit, but let me, let me read it first. Okay, so political correctness is a term used to describe things like language, policies and behavior that don't harm specific parts of our society, like people of different color, different sexual orientation, people with disabilities, older people, women, etc. Before the political correctness, the language we used was offensive to minority groups. It was often racist and sexist. A lot of people felt offended. Today people are more aware of the effects of the language. We use words such as socially disadvantaged rather than blind or deaf. The most important word here is diversity. We need to remember that we live in a diverse society where people have different skin colors, different sexual orientation, believe in different religions. And on top of that, in multicultural societies, people from different backgrounds get married, which makes it even more complex. In Poland, we don't have that many different minority groups. We have ethnic groups, such as Roma and Tatars. Only 4% of the society is not white. However, we still need to respect the fact that they exist and be open-minded. Political correctness is extremely important and it allows us to live in peace and harmony. Okay, one time, more, second time, slower. Political correctness is a term used to describe things like language, policies and behavior that don't harm specific parts of our society, like people of different color, different sexual orientation, people with disabilities, older people, women, etc. Before the political correctness, the language we used was offensive to minority groups. It was often racist, and sexist. A lot of people felt offended. Today, people are more aware of the effects of the language. We use words such as socially disadvantaged rather than blind or deaf. The most important word here is diversity. We need to remember that we live in a diverse society where people have different skin colors, different sexual orientation, believe in different religions, and on top of that, in multicultural societies, people from different backgrounds get married, which makes it even more complex. In Poland, we don't have that many different minority groups. We have ethnic groups such as Roma and Tatars. Only 4% of the society is not white. However, we still need to respect the fact that they exist and be open-minded. Political correctness is extremely important and it allows us to live in peace and harmony. Okay, double, uh, sorry, English. I, I need to remember that. That was the second time uh, um, after, uh, that I read it and now I will show you 
the questions. Okay? The questions. So the first question is, you have it on the screen. What ethnic groups are there in Poland? Okay, I will wait a couple of uh, seconds, maybe a minute at two, because it takes time. So what ethnic groups are there in Poland? I mentioned two ethnic groups, two ethnic groups in Poland. What are they? Okay, you can put a full sentence if you want, or you can put just two words. If you don't know, don't worry, don't worry. We will go back to the text. I will show you the answers and uh, you will then know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not a problem if you don't know. If you know, please put it in the comment. Okay. Mariola, thank you. I'm waiting. Uh, I will give you a um, few mom moments and then we will uh, go back, uh, go, I will check and we will move to the next question. Okay, two ethnic groups that I mentioned. Thank you, Agnieszka. Well done. Okay, good job. Good job. Okay, so I mentioned two ethnic groups that are in Poland. Very good. So I mentioned Roma and Tatars, okay? I didn't, uh, to be honest, to be completely honest, I have not checked if Romas is a, the correct version because I, in Wikipedia, I found that it is Roma. So I am, I, I'm not 100% if Romas is correct or if Roma is correct. So I would need to go back, but remember, uh, that it is uh, not Roman. Roman is a person that comes from Rome in Italy. So that's not correct. Okay. But Romas, I think Romas could be okay. I need to double check that. I will come back to you on maybe on the group Angerska Conversatia. I will uh, answer, uh, I will put something uh, about it and uh, we, we can check together. There are Roma and Tatas. Great. Thank you, Małgorzata. And thank you, Ivona. Well done. Well done. Of course, there are two groups, Tatars and Roma. I would say Roma because that was in Wikipedia. Okay, next one. How many people in Poland are not white? How many are not white? Okay, how many people in Poland? What is the percentage? Because it was in percentage, in percentages. So how many people in Poland are not white? And I will uh, leave uh, this question for a bit. I will give you, uh, I will give you a couple of uh, minutes, maybe a minute or two. Okay. If you hear someone screaming, it's not in my house. It's outside the the house. I have a playground somewhere here and children are playing, I think. Hopefully they're playing. I don't know. Okay. So, what percentage of, uh, of people in Poland are not white? This is a tricky question, I must say. Okay. If you don't know, no, no problem. I don't remember Agnieszka say. Okay. Małgorzata, you are on the right track. Uh, are not po white. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> if you don't remember, it's fine. You know, it's, it's uh, because, uh, so the, the thing is here that I chose questions that would be easier uh, to answer. Because, you know, if I asked you a more complex question, uh, I think that would take a long time for you to answer because the the video also is late. You get the the you get the video a bit later than it actually is, so it all takes quite a long time. All right, so so uh, it's don't worry, <laughs> don't worry if you don't remember. Seriously, it's fine. Uh, it's just it's just a little bit of fun we're having here. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay, so a couple or a few percent, Mariana says. Yes, very good. So 
Uh, people who are not white in Poland, right? It's 4%. 4% of people that are not white. So they have different skin colors, okay? So very good, well done, well done. Uh, if you remembered only that it was a couple of percent, it's fine as well. Okay, I am thinking um, because I prepared three questions, but uh, I, for some reason I didn't put it in, the, uh, in my thing. So I'm thinking, um, okay, I know what I can ask you. Okay, the next question, I need to type it, so give me a moment. Uh, what other, what other words can we use to describe a blind or deaf person okay so this one is a little bit longer i hope you remember if you don't remember don't, don't worry uh, also if you know any uh, it doesn't have to be from the text maybe you know some other uh, words or, or phrases Okay, so what other words can we use to describe a blind or deaf person? And uh, I am waiting. Uh, you can use you can use something that we uh, discussed at the beginning of the lesson. Uh, I showed you some uh, some words, and there was one word that you can use to to do it. If you don't remember from the text, there was um uh, there was also. A phrase that we can use uh, in this case or you can come up with your own as well if you don't remember okay again I will give you a couple of minutes disability Małgorzata you are almost right Małgorzata you are almost right so let's say so let's say to, to make it a little bit uh, clear uh, for this um, so you have a person that you want to say that he right so he's uh, let's say um, you want to describe a person uh, that is blind or deaf and, and uh, it's a man right and you want to say he is blind right you don't want to use blind but he is what you can use you can use this ability but you have to make it a little bit more complex you, you need to add something there because if you cannot say he's a disability okay because if you say uh, he's a disability disability is an adjective right uh, sorry a noun a noun disability okay so you all say disability so let me make it uh, let me explain it all right so disability is niepełnosprawność. Okay, so if you, uh, he is a disability person, you cannot say that. So you can say he has a disability or you can say he is um, a person with a disability. Then it is correct like this he has a disability disability yes he is a person with a disability disabled yes exactly it is abled is another remember about what Małgorzata a right he is a disabled person yes you can also say that let me write it down he is he is a disabled person yes you can say that or he is disabled it also is correct he is a disabled person or he is disabled because disabled is uh, an adjective here perfect good a disabled person mariola said also very good well done well done in the text in the text it was let me have a look because i don't remember socially disadvantaged okay so if you we want to generalize we also can socially disadvantaged that was what was in the text but i want to go back to the text and i want to show you i know it's very small and i'm sorry about this 
uh, but I hope you can read it, okay, a little bit. So let's read together. So political correctness is a term used to describe things like language, policies, and behavior that don't harm specific parts of our society, like people of different color, different sexual orientation, people with disabilities, older people, women, etc. Before the political correctness, the language we used was offensive to minority groups. It was often racist and sexist. A lot of people felt offended. Today, people are more aware of the effects of the language. We use words such as socially disadvantaged rather than blind or deaf. The most important word here is diversity. We need to remember that we live in a diverse society where people have different skin colors, different sexual orientation, believe in different religion, religions. And on top of that, in multicultural societies, people from different backgrounds get married, which makes it even more complex. In Poland, we don't have that many different minority groups. We have ethnic groups such as Roma and Tatars, and only 4% of the society is not white. However, we still need to respect the fact that they exist and be open-minded. Political correctness is extremely important and it allows us to live in peace and harmony. Okay, I hope that you understood most of it. Remember, you don't have to understand everything. You really don't. As long as you understand the context and you understand what it is about, more or less, you don't have to know every single word. If you learned new words from this and you can now see how we use it, then it's a great plus. But if you didn't and it was only a, a thing to, to practice your... Um, listening skills it's also uh, very good okay so i also want you to um uh, go on the blog today on the blog on the okay english blog we have a, an article this the text that i just showed you it is there but what is um uh, I'm just saying that, Mariola. Uh, so so if you want to have the text and you want to see it you can go on the blog, OK English blog, and the text is there. There are questions there, are more questions that we had today. The vocabulary is there. And what else is there? There are words that we don't use when we talk about other people. So not only uh, like socially disadvantaged and, and good words, but also bad words that we use when we talk about others. OK, so one of these and I want to say it because I think Polish people are not aware of this. And when I was at school, we weren't aware of this. And this is very important. There is a word that is a very bad word in English, and it is an N word. And I'm not going to say it because uh, Facebook might block it or someone might report me for this. But I want you to be aware of that. This is a word that comes up a lot in songs by black artists because um, black, arti uh, black people can use this word. It is okay for them to use it, but not for uh, people uh, that are white. And this word is on the blog and you can go and have a look what this word is and why we don't use it. It is a very bad word. Okay. Also, um, on the blog, you will find um, things that are problematic for us uh, to use. And there was a whole discussion about it and uh, how we use, pe uh, how, how we call people that uh, have black skin, right? And uh, I think, in, especially like in, in Poland, we, we have different words for it and we still are not sure if they are good or bad. And uh, I think in English, many people have the same problem. I had this problem because I worked in a very diverse uh, environment when I was in uh, England. And for example, someone asked me, oh, how did this person look like? And I had a problem because I didn't know if the word black was okay to use. And the word black calling another person black is okay it is not offensive it is okay to use the say that she is black or she is a black person or stuff like that it is okay to to do that 
Afro-American is another uh, expression that we use for people that are Americans. Okay, so they have American citizenship. They, they live in the States and that's why they are American. And Afro because they uh, have um, they, they family, uh, their parents come from Africa. So we can say that it's Afro-American person. It's a very nice uh, and very politically correct expression to use. However, not all black people come from Africa, right? They can come from uh, Caribbean, they can come from Jamaica, they can come from, I don't know what else, where else, right? But from different, different continent. So in this case, we can say that this person is of, for example, Jamaican descent. Descent means that uh, it's um, their background, right? It's their family, their family come, came from there. So very often we can uh, see something like that. This person is of African or Jamaican or what else? I don't know, um, uh, descent, right? We can uh, absolutely use it, okay? So I hope this is only a little bit of what is on the blog. On the blog, you will find much more because I don't really have time to go through all of these uh, words and these phrases. And because of the fact that uh, there is a lot of conversations uh, in the media uh, at the moment about race and about sexual orientation, uh, people use different terms. They, 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 they use different words to describe other people. It's, it's very, I think it's very confusing at the moment. Uh, so I was trying to give you a little bit of what I know and what I think is very useful. Um, because I think in Poland at the moment, we are very excited about the presidential elections that are on Sunday. And this is all in the news at the moment. However, in the uh, abroad, uh, in the States, in the UK, we have a lot of conversations about race and equality and all that. So I think uh, if you go on, on the media, BBC or, or other media, you will find uh, these kind of articles and materials. So it's uh, good uh, to know these uh, words as well. Okay, if you want to know more, head to okenglish.eu slash blog. And the last article that you will find is about political correctness. And there are lots of words. The text that we had today is also there. So please go and have a look. Uh, also, there are some questions and not only the questions that we had today, but there are some extra questions there too. And you can basically answer this question in writing in the comments when you scroll down on the article you will find a comment section so you can answer this question there i will check it i always check your answers i will check it and i will reply we can have a discussion if you don't want to do it not a problem at all but i encourage you to at least write something down maybe talk to yourself answer this uh, question to yourself there is no uh, it's not really anything bad or embarrassing if you talk to yourself in English. It's, it's, a, it's a practice, okay? All right, uh, what else do we have here? I think that's it. I hope you liked the lesson. Did you learn anything new? I hope you did. I hope that was uh, something, uh, something new for you. Mam nadzieję, że to była przydatna lekcja i mam nadzieję, że się czegoś nauczyliście. Jestem ciekawa, co było dla was nowe w tych e, wszystkich e, słówkach, które w zasadzie było, bo to była lekcja oparta na słówkach bardziej niż na gramatyce czy czymś innym. E, dajcie znać, co było dla was takie nowe. E, jeżeli e, i znowu z, oczywiście powtarzam, że możecie wejść na bloga i sprawdzić e, tam więcej informacji. E, Małgorzata says really great lesson. I am glad that it was good. E, I hope it was useful too. I thought it is a very, very important subject. Really important. Ostatnia rzecz, moi drodzy, dlaczego zrobiłam taką, e, i to już po polsku powiem, dlaczego zrobiłam taką lekcję. Dlatego, że to nie jest tylko temat, który powinniśmy, na który powinniśmy dyskutować i który jest ważny, ale dlatego, że 
bycie politycznie, bycie politycznie poprawnym w języku angielskim jest niezwykle ważne. Niezwykle ważne. Bardzo często, jeżeli będziecie podróżować, możecie natknąć się, znaczy najprawdopodobniej natkniecie się na osoby, które są otwarte na innych, są tolerancyjne i chcą i, i tak i używają pewnego języka. Tak samo w firmach. Bardzo często, jeżeli pracujecie w zagranicznej firmie, bycie politycznie poprawnym jest niezwykle ważne. Nawet jak sobie co innego, możecie sobie co innego myśleć, nie jest ważne. Natomiast w firmie, gdzie pracujecie, jest to naprawdę ważne. I naprawdę za bycie niepoprawnym politycznie możecie wylecieć. Szczególnie jeżeli macie szefów na przykład z, z innych krajów, czy, czy mieszkacie za granicą, pracujecie w jakiejś firmie, to wszystko jest w regulaminach, tak zwane policies, jak mówiliśmy, policy, to jest ten regulamin, który polityka firmy, która Wam mówi, co możecie robić, a czego nie możecie robić, tak, że dyskryminacja wobec drugiej osoby jest zabroniona i to naprawdę, naprawdę jest bardzo pilnowane obecnie, więc dlatego też mówię o tym, jakich słów używać, jakich słów nie używać. Słowo na N, które jest używane właśnie przez na przykład raperów, czy w ogóle osoby czarnoskóre, natomiast dla nas jest to, nie możemy tego słowa używać, jest to zakazane, naprawdę nie używajcie tego słowa, natomiast ja o tym mówię zawsze, dlatego że w szkole na przykład nas tego nie uczono. I jako młodzi ludzie, którzy byli zafascynowani na przykład hip-hopem, czy różnymi innymi taki, tego typu muzyką, czy filmami o gangsterach i tak dalej, słyszeliśmy ciągle to słowo, więc na przykład u nas w klasie chłopcy się nas zajem tak nazywali, na, używali tego słowa na N. Dopiero jak wyszłam z, ze szkoły i zaczęłam pracować w międzynarodowym środowisku, dopiero wtedy zdałam sobie sprawę z tego, że to słowo, ktoś mi zwrócił na to uwagę i to tak dosyć delikatnie, miałam szczęście, że to było delikatnie, bo gdybym trafiła na inną osobę, to jeszcze bym może oberwała. Także pamiętajcie, że to jest bardzo, bardzo ważne, jakich słów używacie do opisywania drugich e, innych osób. I, I szczególnie w, mm, kiedy jedziemy do kraju, gdzie mamy bardzo dużą różnorodność, diversity, diverse society mamy, e, gdzie, gdzie mamy e, osoby o różnych, kolor, o różnych orientacji, o różnych kolorach skóry i tak dalej, to jest naprawdę bardzo ważne. Um, how super lesson a modern and special vocabulary to uh, look uh, IKEA's boss. I'm not really sure about IKEA's boss. I'm not sure what you mean, but I would be very interested to find more uh, if this is something that uh, is uh, like something interesting. Uh, maybe I will use it uh, to for my for my lessons with my students. Okay, I hope I am very glad that you liked it. I I, uh, I am very glad that you liked it, and I will uh, prepare more lessons uh, like that in the future. Um, and and I'm very happy uh, that it was useful. Okay, if you have questions, if you have questions about the vocabulary, about I don't know whatever came up today, please write it in the comments. Okay, please don't be shy. On Angielska Konversacja Group, there, are, there will be some uh, materials today and the whole week connected with the subject and with what we had today. So head over to Angielska Konversacja if you are not there already and uh, wait for the materials. And I'm sure that uh, it will be also a great fun to discuss different things and to translate sentences and so on and so on. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for today. Um, he wasn't politically correct. I will have a look at that, Mariola. I will have a look at that and maybe we can also discuss this in the future as well. Thank you so much. I hope to uh, see you next Monday, right? Next Monday we're meeting again, no exceptions. I know it's summer, but You know, summer is also a good, a good time to learn because we have long days and hot and it's, well, I don't know if hot is for you, but, uh, you know, we, we can, uh, there, there, there is more daylight outside, so it makes, that, makes us more energized and it's a very good time to learn. 
he lost his job. He wasn't politically correct. Exactly. So if IKEA, if an IKEA's bo a boss can, uh, you know, lost his job, can lose his job because he was he said something that wasn't politically correct, then we, you know, it can happen to any of us. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. See you next week. Bye bye.